What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mass Effect 2. We are here with Shepard, and we are on Normandy. Let's go around and talk to the crew before we actually pick a next destination and go. Because, well, we have a good deal of places to go. I'm thinking the advice that Miranda gave us and the, the advice the elusive man gave us is go and get the professor, the Morton Solus. So we'll read that when we actually get out, but let's go around talking to... The crew. Oh, we got the private terminal still. Let's talk to Edie first, and then Yaman Chambers, and then we'll hit up the private terminal. What's this area of the ship? This is the Combat Information Center. Here, the crew receives sensor data and coordinates gunnery and damage control efforts. While Normandy is flown from the bridge, during combat, the commanding officer issues orders from the CIC. So you're an information... Can we call her a drone? Because she kind of looks like it, but she's an AI. Let's tell her this Chambers. Welcome aboard, Commander. I'm Yeoman Kelly Chambers. I've been assigned as your administrative assistant. I'll manage your messages and help you monitor the crew. And I must say, it's such an honor to work under you, Commander Shepard. The pleasure is mine. I don't need assistance. So she's basically our, uh, our secretary? Is that what's going on here? I'm glad to have you on the team, Miss Chambers. Please, call me Kelly. No. <laughs> Fuck no. Miss Chambers it is. Okay, Kelly. <laughs> anything else? We got a smile. How's the crew? Let's chat. Yeah, how's the crew? Is there anything I should know? You have unread messages at your private terminal. Joker would like to speak to you on the bridge. Anything else, Commander? Let's chat. Do you have a moment to talk? I always have time for you, Commander. What do you do? Are you happy here? What do you think of Cerberus? Well, I'd like to know what the hell she really does besides, well... Or being our secretary. Uh, that's how it feels. What are your responsibilities? I'll keep you notified of any messages or appointments you might have. If any of the crew has important business to discuss, I'll make sure you know. Is that all? Isn't that the type of task better suited for a VI? Yes, but being your yeoman is just my official role. Unofficially, I observe the crew. Everyone knows how risky our mission is. Many of us may not be coming back. That's a lot of pressure. I have a degree in psychology. I'm good at sensing when people are overly taxed. You're a counselor. <laughs> Just fucking keep your distance. You make sure the crew's mental health is sound? Yes. I look for warning signs. I listen. It's not a full-time job, and it's most effective when done informally. You think it's good to have her here keep your distance? Well, I'm not going to say keep your distance. I guess it is good to have a type of person like her on the ship because it can keep people's mental state intact because, well, what the hell is going on? We got a lot of stuff going on here. We're lucky to have someone with your skills, Kelly. Thank you, Shepard. What else would you like to know? What do you think of Cerberus and are you happy? This organization has a dark reputation. Do you have any concerns working for them? Not at all. Our methods can be harsh, but Cerberus has noble objectives. We look out for human interests. Advance human technology, save human lives. They're good goals. Does Cerberus hate humans? Listen, what we know about Cerberus right now, I wouldn't say they even hate humans, but the Codex stated that Cerberus could, you know, rival the Council. They're pretty much like the Terra Firma, but the ones that we came in contact with here, they don't seem very zealous against other species. So, I still don't know how I feel about Cerberus, but I'm on the upper end of actually, well, Instead of being in the middle, I'm kind of on the upper end with Cerberus here because they don't seem like they seem in the in the codexes. It sounds like Cerberus wants to dominate all aliens and put humankind on top. Cerberus looks out for humanity, but that doesn't mean we hate aliens. My sister started a dog shelter, but she loved cats too. I love humanity. I also love Asari, Quarian, Turian, Salarian, Hanar. That isn't in conflict with Cerberus ideals. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Are you happy? Oh, this stuff. You are very loving. You're naive. You are very loving, Kelly. You seem to be very loving. Yes. She really does. She loves everybody. Obviously. That's a very positive attitude. What can I say? I'm a people person. Anything else you'd like to talk about? I feel like we should watch her. I don't know why. I got this feeling that she's like... Okay. Parsimi doesn't fully trust Cerberus, obviously, with what happened in the first game. It's just, the vibe that's coming off, it's it's hard to trust them. 
but still they don't seem very zealous and I do feel like it's actually a good thing that we're in this Cerberus and we're doing something to stop these collectors, reapers, whatever the hell is going on. We also gotta remember that these people were probably planted here. They were probably put here. We don't know any of these people. We didn't pick the crew. But same can be said about the Alliance when we were on the Normandy in the, in the first game. So higher ups, pick who coming on. It's just, it's hard to say, but I feel like she's very, I wouldn't call her naive, but almost very straightforward with, almost very blunt forward. Is that a word? Blunt forward? She's blunt about stuff, but she's very forward. And it, it's, she's kind of pushing this lovey thing going on here. I don't know. But I still think we should be careful. Are you happy here? How do you feel about being assigned to the Normandy? I was handpicked by the elusive man to help fight the greatest threat known to humanity. How do I feel? Honored, exhilarated, terrified. But mostly I feel encouraged. Under your leadership, we can't fail. We definitely won't fail. So she was handpicked by the elusive man, and that's what I'm trying to get at. It's all a matter of trusting the elusive man here. Do we fully trust him? I feel like we can, but I still feel like we should be careful. And she seems conveniently nice and... It's just, if you think about it, it's a scary job because what if she is like a agent or something? Or what if she is like even, I don't know, I know, I'm just thinking too far ahead or thinking probably, probably not even right whatsoever because Chambers is probably a great addition to the team and I'm over here thinking that, you know, because of the psychiatrist thing, you can really put your, your thoughts into other people. You can encourage, look, it's right here, encourage, you can encourage other people but it's interesting let's just say that we should just be careful that's all that's the main that's the gist of it be careful don't worry we'll defeat the collectors i trust you implicitly the moment i met you i knew i could close my eyes fall back and you'd be there you just met me 32 seconds ago i'd embrace you are we gonna embrace her i'd catch you drop your ass <laughs> i'd embrace you why not? I might do more than catch you, Kelly. Now that's an enticing <laughs> thought. Anything else you'd like to talk about? Leora would be pissed. There's nothing wrong with idle flirting, right? Come on. I think that's it, yeah? Let's go. See you, Kelly. I better go. Okay. Maybe we'll talk later. Maybe. Take it easy. What's this private terminal about? Let's check this out. Team status. Check the status of your team. Oh. Shit. What is this? What do we got? Information. Archangel? Oh, we can read about all the... Holy shit! Is this the companion screen? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 companions? Is this what it is? It says squad selection, so this must be the companions. I like how they data padded out. In the first game, they had the, uh... Like, the darked out highlight of what the person actually is. Information, Miranda, just normal. Loyalty, normal. Overload warp, slam, slam. Some machine guns, pistols. And then Jacob, normal pool incinerary, heavy pistols, shotguns. What's this? Jacob don't have it, but Miranda has cycle appearance. Oh, hello. Cycle appearance. Miranda, I think that's... I kind of like the outfit, I do. I'm not sure about the, uh, the helmet you got going on there. Let's just leave this on for now. Upgrades. Upgrades improve your squad members' powers, your weapons, and your ship, making mission success more likely. Acquire new upgrades by finding them on missions, purchasing them from stores, or researching them using a research terminal. You know what this Normandy is missing? It's interesting, but... It's missing, it's missing that eerie music. Remember the eerie music in the first game of the Normandy? Unread messages, holy moly. We got about 75 messages here. Message from Anderson, from Counselor Anderson. On the off chance that the rumors are true and you actually are alive, I need you to come and talk to me on the Citadel. A lot has changed in the last two years. You put me on the council and it's only fair 
that you be allowed to speak for yourself about what we've been hearing. Anderson knows we're alive. What the hell? Who the hell told him that? How does anybody even know that we're alive? Lucid man telling people? Deal struck with Zaid Masani from Elusive Man. Shepard, we reached an agreement with veteran mercenary Zaid Masani. You know the name Zaid has been involved in some of the best known and some utterly unknown military operations in the Terminus systems. And is feared as a ruthless and relentless bounty hunter. I felt you might need a man with his skills on your mission, so I arranged to have him join you. You will find him on Omega, that's where we're going next, I, I believe. Where he's wrapping up his contract bounty, don't worry about his fee, I'm taking care of that personally. The elusive man, he's writing us messages here, right? I'm wondering, I'm wondering if the elusive man, it said that there's a quantum device to the elusive man. I wonder if we'll have to talk to him like we talked to the council and we can hang up on his ass. Remember we hung up on the council every single fucking time besides when they called at the end to go save him? <laughs> Project Firewalker. Commander, the MSV Rosalie, a survey ship with Cerberus connection, has gone missing. The survey team has fled testing a new prototype, the Hammerhead Planetside Exploration Rover. In addition, scientist Dr. Manuel Casey and Dr. Robert O'Loy are aboard the MSV Rosalie and conducting research for us. We need to find the ship, her survey team, and the doctors. The MSV Rosalie has last seen near planet Ziona. Alista Esmar Frontier. Normandy crash site. From Admiral Hackett, he's contacting us again. He knows that we're alive. <laughs> Shepard, I have a mission for you, and only you can complete it. It's gonna happen again, I know it. Commander Shepard, our scans in the Armada system have turned up something we thought you should see. The final location of the wreckage of the SSV Normandy. The final location of Normandy? The first one? Get out of here. We thought this news might be important to you, but we also have an ulterior motive. The Alliance would like to honor the Normandy with a monument to be built on the site of the ship's final resting place. We'd like to invite you to place the monument and be the first to walk on the site. There are still 20 members unaccounted for from the attack on the Normandy. If you find any signs of these lost crewmen, we ask that you report to the Alliance so that those heroes' families might find some closure. Godspeed to you, Commander. That's actually really awesome that we can go and see the first Normandy and we gotta find this crew, the unaccounted for ones. Recon Hood from Elusive Man. Shepard, it occurred to our armor technicians that you may not want to show your face everywhere you go. They sent by a hood that Cerberus issued to its covert operatives. It has additional microframe functions that you may like. The hood is in your quarters. Thank you, Elusive Man. The Recon Hood, then. I was wondering how we got that. Remember, we went to the station and then we were going to change the armor and this was the, this was the one hood. Overlord from the Elusive Man. Shepard, one of our cells just went off the grid without explanation. Project Overlord has been experimenting with highly volatile technology and I need you to investigate. Their work is extremely compartmentalized, enough that I can't divulge operational details over this channel. You'll find them on the planet Ite. Typhon system in the Phoenix massing cluster. Please use care in this matter. Oh, that sounds pretty interesting. Arc projector from Elusive Man. Shepard, we recently had an incident involving the Geth at one of our outposts in the Skillian Verge. Don't worry, I'm not sending you off to chase anything down. Oh, you're not sending us off like fucking hack it? Our operatives waged a highly successful battle against a Geth scouting party and credited their success to a new advanced electrical attack device that we finally let them take out of the lab. Since their unit is being reassigned for some rest and relaxation, I thought you should take custody of the weapon in the meantime. The weapon is called an art projector. 
I sent it to the Normandy's Armory so you can examine it for yourself and use it if you deem it worthy. It's going through plenty of tests that indicate it overloads kinetic barriers and synthetic enemies particularly well, but laboratory demonstrations are a poor substitute for actual field reports. We know it works, now we want to see what it can do in the right hands. If all goes well, we'll use your tactics to train other operatives. Interesting. So it's some kind of weapon that we can put on, I guess next time we're out. We can just change weapons. The, the he, is it heavy weapon though? The heavy weapons, I wonder the more heavy weapons we get, we can change them out in... Like we were able to change the pistol to the submachine gun type of thing. Rendezvous with Kasumi Goto. From Elusive Man. Shepard, at great cost and effort, we have tracked down the master thief Kasumi Goto and convinced her to work with you. Very few people have ever heard of her and fewer can claim to have seen her in person. She is unequaled at stealth and infiltration and her skills will prove invaluable in your mission. Travel to Zakira Ward on the Citadel. There you will find a special ad terminal that differs from the usual. Input the password silence is golden to begin the rendezvous. Ascension Financial Services, your account. From Standwick Dobbs, banking agent, Ascension Financial Services, Earth. Hello, Commander Shepard. Thank you for submitting your updated medical documentation. Your status has been changed from deceased to alive. After deducting modest administration fees for closing the file, the subsequent change in status and reactivation of your account, you have the remaining balance of 100,000 credits. Thank you for banking with Ascension Financial Services. We look forward to working with you. Are you protecting your greatest assets? Will you find the best life insurance rates and coverage to fit your needs? Reply for a free quote today. Hey, where's all my 9999999 credits, pal? You guys fucking took them. Archive messages, unread messages, upgrades. Well, I think we're good on this. That was an interesting addition. It truly was. I like that. Hey, Kelly, you got anything else? How may I help you, Commander? How's the crew? Is there anything I should know? Joker would like to speak to you on the bridge. Anything else, Commander? Toodles. That'll be all. I'll be here if you need anything. Whoa! All right, well, let's go talk to Joker on the bridge. Can we... A scientist is required to use the technical laboratory. Edie, let me in. Rise of the Alliance. Codex Planet. I... Oh, we have codexes. After last episode, I went and looked through the codexes. There was actually only two codexes that we didn't read because all the codexes in there are exactly the same codexes as Mass Effect 1. It's literally like they just imported them all, and they imported them as like you didn't read them, but you did. Scholar, unlock 15 computers, half dig. Well, that's gonna help though, seriously, because now that we marked out everything that we know that we read, whatever we're getting now will be easy. But I left a few there, as in there was collectors that I know we didn't read about, obviously, and then there was something else. There's Edie here, too. She's everywhere, huh? Flight controls. Scholar, we are getting it. Shepard the Scholar. Clean. You good, Joker? How are you? Look at him. <laughs> He's just there to Shepard like, uh... Commander. So, come here too often? You're actually saying... <laughs> Is he talking to us? He's fucking gonna talk to us. It's not weird, is it, Joker, that I'm standing here? The elusive man has some crazy looking eyes for a guy trying to lay low. I just thought it was funny that he was creepily peeking at us. And he might think it's... <laughs> That's quite a good tune, Joker. Now I feel like every time we come to Joker, we have to just sit. Come up here and stare. And that's it. Hey, how are you, Joker? Anything new? All right, let's talk. Yes, Shepard. Whoa, where the hell did you come from? I was talking to Joker. Whoa. Let's talk about you. Well, I guess what is what is this room? What's this area of the ship? This is the bridge where the navigator plots our FTL vectors, and the helmsman maneuvers the ship. 
Yeah, sitting right here, thanks. He is right there. Joker is... <laughs> he's typing his ass off and he's looking all over the room. Huh? Tell me about Cerberus, let's talk about you. Let's talk about you, I guess. I want to know more about you. Do you have a specific inquiry? Whoa! You and Joker, your name, your location, your job. How are you getting along with Joker? Mr. Moreau does not trust me. It offends him that I am installed aboard his ship's computers. Yeah, the last Normandy did just fine without an AI reminding me the airlock is ajar. Honestly, um, if this is a good AI, though, Joker, we have a super big advantage over everyone. But the thing is, it's hard to... How are you going to trust an AI fully? Can you? It's unknowable, though. But that's the whole, literally, the whole mentality that started the whole Geth Quarry and stuff. And then obviously it might have been the mentality that's whoever created the Reapers that started the whole Reaper stuff too. So we can't always think like that. I'm just worried. I just, like, I really love that an AI is on here and I want it to work. I just hope it doesn't, things don't happen. It's, look, it's never bad to worry. But let's just hope. Because this could be so valuable to the crew. Why are you named Edie? Edie is the phonetic pronunciation of E-D-I. That is an acronym for Enhanced Defense Intelligence. Your location? Where are you? My core intelligence is housed in a quantum blue box located behind the medical bay. So you're behind the medical bay? What do you do aboard the ship? I operate the ship's electronic and cyber warfare suites in combat. My reaction time is much faster than any organic. I collate the records of shipboard monitoring devices for the elusive man. I serve additional functions which are restricted at this time. Oh, hello. Monitoring devices? The elusive man has monitoring devices on board? He has invested most of Cerberus's resources into the design and construction of this ship. He has an interest in monitoring our progress. That's... I mean, that works. So he's looking... He's probably got a camera in every single area. Cyber warfare means things like viruses, right? In close-range ship-to-ship combat, I can sometimes break through the firewalls of an enemy's internal wireless network. Once I seize control of their systems, I can turn off gravity or air. I can disable weapons guidance or shields, or I can put their fusion plant in meltdown. On the defense, I manage Normandy's own suite of jammers, decoys, and internal firewalls. There ain't no space pirates gonna board the Normandy. That's pretty sick. Sounds incredibly useful. Why isn't there someone like that on every warship? An organic operator cannot react quickly enough to changing circumstances or perform the necessary multitasking. This is a role that can only be filled by an artificial intelligence. Unfortunately, we are suspect. Well, it might have something to do with how an AI almost destroyed galactic civilization just put it out there. <laughs> hey, Joker. Good to have you in the conversation. <laughs> I actually think this is so useful. I know I'm a little bit skeptical about it. I mean, who wouldn't? But this is really awesome. This could be really powerful. Functions? Restricted functions. Like what? I do not know. Some of my databases are sealed. Some of my hardware is kept offline. I assume that when certain unknown conditions are met, those functions will be released to me. Interesting. Let's discuss something else. Ready. Tell me about Cerberus. I want to know more about the people I'm working with. Much of that data is classified. Do you have a specific inquiry? Structure Cerberus building- Yeah, the building the Normandy! How did Cerberus replicate the most advanced warship in the Alliance Navy without anyone knowing? I have a block that prevents me from answering that question. A block? What do you mean? Although I am less controlled than other AI, I am still subject to behavioral blocks and the physical isolation of my hardware. In this case, I am prevented from truthfully answering your question by Cerberus's levels of secret classification. Well, isn't that convenient of Cerberus? So you have blocks that you can't do certain things? Ooh. That's... You're just... So you're pretty much bent to the elusive man's will here. Resources? What sort of resources does Cerberus have? Money, personnel, facilities? I have a block that prevents me from answering that question. Well, we don't want to learn about block. We already know. Structure of Cerberus? How is Cerberus organized? Aside from the elusive man, I don't see much chain of command. Cerberus is organized into task-oriented cells. Each operates in isolation. 
members from one cell cannot recognize the members of another. Each cell's agents are led by a single operator. We are called the Lazarus cell, which is directed by Operator Lawson. There's so many different cells, that's... So basically, maybe some of the Cerberus ones that we encountered had nothing to do with the Elusive Man. No, but the Elusive Man's like the leader of all the Cerberus, so he has to know. But it's a chain of command thing. Maybe he knew, signed off on something. Sitting there all boss, drinking, and smoking cigarettes. And then... They just went and did it. What I'm saying is... Since there's so many cells, maybe it's a different part. And this is Lazarus. Lazarus cell. Which is operated by... Miranda. So how many operations is Cerberus running right now? I have a block that prevents me from answering that question. I could have guessed that one. Take it easy, easy. Let's see there. Let's right discuss here. something else. Ready. Edie, have a good one. That's all for now. Logging you out, Shepard. Interesting character, friends. Interesting. I mean, we have an AI here, and it's... Oh, we can close this? Joker, you can't see now. Driving blind. You don't even look out the windows, probably. Can you believe this, Commander? It's my baby! Better than new! It fits me like a glove! And leather seats! Military may set the hardware standard, but on a first-gen frigate, they could care less if the seats breathe. Civilian sector comfort by design. The reproduction is not intended to be perfect, Mr. Moreau. Seamless improvements were made. And there's the downside. I liked the Normandy when she was beautiful and quiet. Now she's got this thing I don't want to talk about. It's like ship cancer. Now <laughs> she's got this thing I don't want to talk about. This ship is just a copy. We can trust them for now. This is too good to be true. It's kind of too good to be true. This ship is a copy, Joker. It really is in its own way. Just a copy, though? Too good to be true? It does feel too good to be true. It's not the same, Joker. There's nothing here that was even part of the real Normandy. There's us. I have to take what I can get. The last two years sucked. You'll see. Even if an AI is spying on us, no way they'll invest this much just to screw us over. It'll be better than the old days. I hope so. I died. Yeah, you are such a downer. That honestly is a good point, Joker. For them investing so much stuff in us, in all of this, and then they'll just screw us over. How much credits do you think the elusive man spent on all of this? Between the Normandy and Shepard. Way so much. So the odds of them betraying us seem to be kind of small. Because they're kind of lose they're gonna lose out on their assets here. You think the AI is spying on us though? Well, obviously. And it's in its own way, Commander. maybe, but the I, I don't even think the AI needs I don't, Edie, I don't even think Edie needs to spy on us because the elusive man has monitoring devices everywhere. I assume everything is going well up here. I really want a chance to put the Normandy through her paces. I just have to trim up the drive output and it'll be like we never lost her. Safety standards advise against manipulating drive settings while engines are powered and in use, Mr. Moreau. Commander, can we shut this thing off? I don't need it in my day to day. <laughs> it's gonna mute, use it, adapt, Cerberus disagrees. You could use the mute button. If you don't want to hear it, turn the damn sound off. Well, it doesn't change anything, it's still watching. Like some creepy kid staring at the back of your head in comp side. <laughs> you just want to punch him, but he's special and he sets fires or something. Okay, a little too far there, but you know what I mean. Your problem, not mine. <laughs> Thanks, I'll remember this. What the hell, Joker? They upgraded Joker, they upgraded all the dialogue so far. We haven't even got to the companions. Half the episode, we just got up here and told the Edie and Joker. <laughs> I love it. So, how do you think we're doing? Well, the Normandy's not as ready as she could be. There's always more we could upgrade. And as for the crew, you'd have to ask a, a people person. We can upgrade the Normandy? There was a research area, and that was about upgrading the squad, but he said something about upgrading the Normandy. What do you think about the people we're picking up? Well, about the ones you went out with last, I would never say anything against Miranda and expect to survive the reprisal. Jacob is way too nice a guy for the number of ways he knows how to kill people. It's just my opinion, though. There's really no need to go spreading it around. Jacob has been hitting people with the good stuff for days now. The good old days. Ever think about the old Normandy and the trouble we got up to? <laughs> yeah, those seem like the good old days now, but come on, it was hell at the time. Geth, Saren, Sovereign, and then we got dumped. We're stuck in a weird place, sure, but back then it wasn't all sunshine and bunnies. 
The old crew, yes. Where you know anything about him, Joker? What happened to the rest of the old crew? I heard most survived. Almost did. Presley didn't. And the rest of us just sort of drifted apart. The Alliance didn't care. I don't think they liked all the non-humans in your crew. We were your team, Commander. With the Normandy destroyed and you gone, there wasn't much keeping us together. That's terrible. So basically, when Shepard got killed, they just treated all of the other species on the Normandy like shit. No wonder they all fucking left. That's terrible. Joker, cockpit, how are you? I assume everything is going well up here? Good for now. Fractured my thumb on the mute, but I think I made my point. <laughs> you fractured your thumb That's on the mute? That's it for now. See ya, Commander. <laughs> Alright, whenever we come in the Joker now, let's just come up here and stare at his ass. And see if anything happens, because that was so interesting. Alright, Joker. Let's go find... Oh, we got the map now, look! We can finally look at the map. Joker, ED, Normandy Hologram, Galaxy, we got all types of stuff here. Elevator, weapons, armory, the briefing. Let's just go. Let's go around, let's see what the hell we can do. The first thing I want to do is... Wait, so there's the armory. Let's go into the armory first. I was thinking about hitting up the elevator, and then... I want to go to the captain's quarters. Let's hit up this armory. There's nothing in here. No one in here. Edie! What's this area of the ship? This is the armory, where small arms are maintained and upgraded. Using Omnitool, computer-aided design, and manufacturing, we have the capability to manufacture several new models. Well, there we go. I love how Edie is just in every room. She can tell us what the hell is going on. Oh shit, there's Jacob! Commander, there hasn't been time to really settle in and take stock. I want to say that working with you is a great opportunity to do something that matters. It's a privilege to serve on the Normandy, Commander. It's a risky assignment. It sure the fuck is, Jacob. Bringing you wasn't my choice. I feel like Jacob is a, is a good soldier. You may change your tune if we end up like the original Normandy. Maybe. As long as the elusive man walks his talk. And you do the same, I'll do my best to make sure we succeed. That's been the condition for my service so far. I have issues with certain actions Cerberus has taken in the past. To be honest with you, I do too. And we're kind of in the same boat here then, Jacob. What has Cerberus done to make you nervous? A lot. They've been called terrorists, and with good reason. Doubt you can find a more checkered past. But if the Collector threat is real, and we do something about it, Cerberus will be remembered differently. Or we'll all be tried and executed. Can't count on people thinking about it as hard as I have. Glad to have you on board. I appreciate your honesty. Do your job and nothing more. To be honest with you, I'm actually really glad to have Jacob here. He does seem like a good man. He was in the Alliance beforehand and now he crossed over to Cerberus. He's here because he wants to do something. I really respect that. I look forward to working with you, Mr. Taylor. Likewise, Commander. Let me know if you need anything. Take it easy, Jacob. Have a good day. I love how he's saluting. Much respect, man. Much respect, Jacob. Tech labs? A scientist is required to use the technical laboratory. Oh, shit. This is a whole new connection here. Hello? The briefing room? What's this area of the ship? This is the FTL communications room. In addition to interfacing with the FTL comm network, Normandy is fitted with a quantum entanglement communicator linked to the elusive man's office. This allows lag-free communication even when you operate off the comm grid. That's really fucking useful, yeah. Why aren't these used everywhere? Each quantum pair costs nearly as much as a comm relay, and can pass only one quantum bit of data at a time. In addition to the cost and bandwidth issues, the system is strictly point-to-point. -point. To contact a hundred different worlds, we would need to manufacture and install a hundred entangled pairs. One link to each world. Any little explanation that you ask for Edie, it seems like she is going to give you the long and long of it. Never the long and short of it. <laughs> I love it. Edie, tell me everything you know. I've never heard of a quantum entanglement communicator. How does it work? Essentially, two subatomic particles are created in an entangled state. One is installed here, and the other in the elusive man's office. When one particle occupies a given quantum state, its entangled partner will always enter the opposite state. 
no matter the distance between them. If we alter the state of our particle, that alters the state of the elusive man's. This allows us to send data in the form of quantum bits. All right, that's all for now. Logging you out, Shepard. You're speaking above my pay grade here, Edie. Interesting enough, seriously. So we have a... Uh, literally, we can just contact the elusive man at will. And that's pretty much what we did with the council in the first game, right? Commander, you've received a new message at your private terminal. A new message? We didn't do even do nothing. Unread messages? Oh, no, we didn't! Wait. Unread message? Good message? Kelly, there ain't no message here. Let's go. Let's keep going. Holy. Oh, it tells you who's on this. That is so awesome. CIC Armory, Tech Labs, the Briefing Room, Cockpit, Team Members, Jacob Taylor. The Crew Quarters, Miranda. Oh, there's... Wow, the Normandy is huge compared because, friends, there was a CIC. Actually, no, there was Crew Quarters, but you just kind of went down them. You didn't need the elevator to get to the Crew Quarters. But it seems like they closed it off. They made it in layers now, kind of. It was always in layers, but it was different. Let's go to the captain's cabin. Personal cabin. Let me in. Anything else? I keep wanting to look for Edie everywhere. Edie, there you are. What's this area of the ship? This is the commanding officer's quarters. It's larger than the quarters of other warships I've served on. This is a Cerberus vessel, not an Alliance warship. Accommodations have been made for personal taste. That said, this space is directly under the exterior pressure hall. The fitting yard workers called it the loft. The loft? Whoa, we got a big ass fucking fish tank. Can we put fish in here? Oh, we better be able to put some fish in here. We're gonna have to find fish though. Obviously. Private terminals. Look at this Normandy little ship up here. Friends. There's a picture of Liara on the thing. Oh, that's so cool. Medals of Honor view trophies. Oh, save humanity in the galaxy, a certain annihilation. What the hell? Oh, this is achievements. I'm, I, I don't want to look at that. No. Let's not look at achievements. Because it might have spoiler stuff. Private terminal. Oh, we can look at a private terminal up, up here too. Okay. Kelly said we had a message, but we don't. So like, oh, we got a... Is this another picture? We got radio? We can just play music! <laughs> oh no. This is all the music in the first game! Your bed looks so fucking comfortable. Sounds kind of scary. Oh, it's like the planet is like I'm exploring in the Mako again. This is nostalgia hitting in. That's Novaria. I remember that one. Remember? The Citadel. This is so cool, it's so small of a thing, but it's cool as hell to me. Oh, this sounds, sounds like you really gonna get ready on a mission. Let's just keep this, come on. Let's look at our, our gear. It'll play in the background. Cool. We got helmet, we got the breather, we got the recon hood, that's fine. What I wanted to do. I love this. What's tent two? Oh, the other one. We can do white. We can do pretty pink. That red's slick. I want the black. I want the full force black. Oh, that's... That's like a red. We'll keep that one. Pattern color? No. 
We want to keep red. And pattern. Oh, it's got that military-esque feel to it. Can we do black? We can do... Wait. Nah, let's go back. Come on, let's get out of here. We need to go, we need to go fight some. Let's go fight Saren again. It literally seems like that's what we're about to do with that music. <laughs> cool. Let's go down to the crew quarters here. See if we can talk to the rest of the crew. I wanted to get to... I wanted to get our barons before we went out. Obviously, the Normandy is huge. But I also wanted to get to this Omega. Crew women's restroom? We can just go into the women's restroom. I can't do that. Men's restroom? I can't, I can't do it. I want to go and see if there's, no, we can't do it. Let's not. Oh, she's a cutie. How old? Ah, uh, she'll be a year old next month. Oh, you'll miss her first birthday. Well, my family lives in New Canton. Oh, uh, that colony's on the edge of the frontier. Could be vulnerable to collector attack, couldn't it? Exactly. It's most important that she have a first birthday. That's why I'm here. Here fighting for Cerberus. Good on you, sir. Little crew interactions. Look at this shit. Oh my. Where is Miranda? Can we look at the map? Miranda's here. She's... We got the main battery, the AI core. Oh, the AI core. That's where Edie was. Edie, are you down here anywhere? Hello? No? This is where... Chef surprise again? Come on, Rupert. I'm sorry, Princess. Filet mignon and caviar coming right up. Let me just get out my doilies. That'd be <laughs> real nice, Mr. Gardner. They turned Caden's area into a fucking kitchen. That's great. Mess Sergeant Gardner. Commander Shepard, the hero of the Citadel. You did humanity proud that day. Miss Sergeant Rupert Gardner here. How can I be a service? Need anything? Hold on, let's ask him first about stuff. What do you do here on the Normandy? What don't I do? Most think of me as the ship's cook, but I'm also the facilities technician and custodian. HVAC, plumbing, non-mission critical electrical. I make sure they're all clean and running. Janitor and cook, I was thinking the same thing. So the man cleaning the toilets is also preparing the meals. I wash my hands, most of the time. This ain't no luxury liner. You have to pull your own weight in a Cerberus vessel, and I catch what falls through the cracks. <laughs> through the cracks. You certainly do catch what's falling through the cracks. I see what you did there, Gardner. Thoughts on Cerberus joining Cerberus? This motherfucker cleans the toilets. Sometimes he washes his hands. Other times he just he leaves it on there for extra flavor. Thoughts on Cerberus? How do you feel about working for Cerberus? Damn proud. Cerberus gets the job done. The Alliance and Council have got their heads buried so deep up their butt puckers they can't see squat. It'll take good old human ingenuity to crush these collector vermin. Only Cerberus knows that. Joining Cerberus. How did you find your way into Cerberus? Can you believe I was once a family man, working the Ezo rigs along the frontier? I was happy enough, but losing everything to Batarian raiders can change your outlook. I needed to make a difference. I'm no soldier, but I've got skills, and Cerberus keeps an eye out for talent. I'll do whatever it takes to help. Be that plumbing a sewer, routing an air duct, or keeping everyone's bellies full. Every job is important, seriously. Without someone like him, the morale is going to go down because obviously you're not going to have great food. Not saying he's the greatest cook with his dual double-edged jobs that he has here. Double-edged sword of jobs. But it's still nice to have somebody like him on the Normandy because, well, you just need that. You have everything you need. I make do, but have you ever tried to prepare a decent meal with military provisions? I'm good, but I'm no miracle worker. 
Taking down the collectors is going to be rough business. The crew deserves a few fine meals before they throw themselves into the fire. How can I help? What do you need? If I had some quality ingredients... Aw, oh, shit. You've got more to worry about than grocery shopping on the Citadel. Forget I mentioned it. Give me the list. Oh, this is on the Citadel. You're sending us to the Citadel? If I head that way, I'll keep an eye out. Much appreciated. Most of this list is probably standard fare for those Namby Pambies on the Citadel. Anything else you'd like to talk about? Negative. Take it easy. I won't take any more of your time. Back to work. I like Gardner. We have a quest. Find ingredients. Go to the Citadel and purchase the special ingredients. We're going to get you some gloves while we're at it, sir. Since if you're not going to wash your hands at the... Gunnery officer is required to access the gunnery control station. Gunnery control station? Was this even something before? No, I don't think this was anything. Anyways, we're going to need you to have gloves before you handle doo-doo. Where could Miranda be? Miranda is... Oh, are you in my old quarters, Miranda? Miranda's office now? I get it, though, because Shepard moved to the top of the Normandy. Edie, you in here? Commander, what can I do for you? Can we talk Normandy status? Let's ask her about this stuff first. Anything I should know regarding the Normandy? The crew's working well, and the ship appears to be performing to specifications. What exactly are your duties, aside from keeping an eye on me? I'm the elusive man's agent. You're his most important asset. My job is to make sure you succeed. Aside from that, I send regular reports to the elusive man, updating our status. Can we talk? You have a minute, Miranda? No doubt you've got a lot of questions. Cerberus isn't as evil as most people believe. If I can help allay any of your concerns, I'd be happy to do so. So, what would you like to know? Whoa, Miranda. You are surprisingly nice to us now, right now. Maybe she just needed to trust us. She needed to see where Shepard's loyalties lie. Interesting. I know what we're doing here, but what's Cerberus's long-term goal? The advancement of the human race. Nothing more, nothing less. The Salarians have the Special Tasks Group. The Asari have their legendary commandos for stealth and recon operations. Cerberus is humanity's answer to those organizations. Honestly, that's... not a bad point there, Miranda. But those organizations are regulated by governments. Who keeps Cerberus in check? Nobody. We're privately funded and our backers trust the elusive man to make the right decisions. But he's very clear about our goals. Protect humanity and serve its advancement. You think if the Alliance funded Cerberus, they would be... they would have less of a bad reputation? Makes me wonder. Are you military or political? Or both? Cerberus has several divisions. Political, military, scientific. But we're all working towards the same goal. The teams you encountered before your accident were mostly part of our military division. But not all Cerberus operations use the same protocols. We try not to get bogged down in bureaucracy or formality. So they were completely different from this part of Cerberus then. They pretty much had nothing to do with it. Interesting. And that was the military part of Cerberus? What is Lazarus then? Maybe it's a, maybe Lazarus feels like it's a mixture of all. What kind of resources does Cerberus have? We're very well funded, though I doubt anyone other than the elusive man knows exactly how well. But our resources aren't unlimited. Reviving you and rebuilding the Normandy was a significant investment and a significant risk. We're all hoping you can do the impossible, Shepard. No pressure. No pressure, Miranda. None at all. I makes me really wonder. I've already been speculating about Cerberus. It makes me really wonder how big Cerberus actually is. And the Elusive Man is ultimately the leader of Cerberus because the way this is going, it almost feels like the Elusive Man is only in charge of like this part of Cerberus, as in like Lazarus and some some special other projects. But then again, it also feels like he's in charge of everything. Kinda. Elusive Man? What can you tell me about the Elusive Man? Not much that you don't already know. Even I don't have access to most of his background. And you've seen more of him than most ever do. It's rare for him to become directly involved in missions, but you're something special. Whatever else people might say about him, I can assure you he's got humanity's best interests at heart. That includes you and me. 
What makes you think so? Let's hope he has the galaxy's best interests at heart, though. Because this is ultimately, defeating the Reapers is not just for humanity. Yes, humanity is a piece of it. But it's also for everyone. How can you be sure of that if you know so little about him? I didn't get to where I am without knowing how to gauge people's motives and ambitions. Even from brief encounters. He's no saint and he'd be the first to admit it. But he is committed. Humanity couldn't have a better advocate. Tell me about yourself, Miranda. Oh, I guess that's fair. I've spent the last two years learning everything there is to know about you. Well, you should probably know that I've had extensive genetic modification. Not my decision, but I make the most of it. It's one of the reasons the elusive man handpicked me. I'm very good at just about anything I choose to do. Miranda, you become very nice. I like this. Standoffish a little bit at first, and then... She seems like she's really on our side now. You're cocky? You're genetically modified? You're cocky? What is that about? You're cocky? You certainly don't lack for confidence. It's just a fact. My reflexes, my strength, even my looks, they're all designed to give me an edge. No point in hiding from it. It's the reason I'm trusted to oversee the most dangerous, risky, and technically demanding operations Cerberus undertakes. And it's why I was assigned to you. It's my job to make sure you succeed, Shepard. You're genetically modified. Friends, we read about genetic engineering in the first game, and that was really interesting. So she's full, she's like genetically modified. But then again, that goes in hand in hand with that one side quest we had on the Citadel in the, in the first game where, remember the gentleman and his, and his brother's wife, they were talking about what to do with the baby. Anyways, he was saying that most of the soldiers in the Alliance are genetically modified anyway. What level of genetic modification are we talking about? That's very thorough. Physically, I'm superior in many ways. I heal quickly and I'll likely live half again as long as the average human. My biotic abilities are also very advanced. For a human. Add to that some of the best training and education money can buy and... Well, it's pretty impressive, really. So you're perfect. Yeah, but... When did you get all this stuff done? When you were a kid? Sounds like you were designed to be perfect. Maybe, but I'm not. I'm still human, Shepard. I make mistakes like everyone else. And when I do, the consequences are severe. Everyone expects a lot from someone with my... abilities. Thanks for the information, Miranda. I'll talk to you later. Of course, Commander. Whatever you need. Miranda! You're really interesting. So she's genetically modified? And she just straight up told us. But that's totally fine, I understand. I mean, this is space we're talking about here. We're going, we're in space. We're in the future. Genetically modified Shepard's gotta be genetically modified now. And if not before, he was probably a little bit. I can imagine. So I don't, that's not, I don't feel like that's out of the ordinary, especially for, I don't know, just the game, just, this, in general, I feel like we're far into the future, basically. And we're almost at the pinnacle. Dr. Chakwas! What the hell? Hold on, let me talk to Edie. Is that Edie? What's this area of the ship? The sick bay. It is equipped to provide short-term emergency care. In the event of critical injury, personnel must be transferred to a fully equipped medical facility. We got Dr. Chakwas here! And we have Joker! <laughs> Anyways, what I'm saying is, I don't find gen genetic engineering strange whatsoever. It's almost like she wanted us to know about it, because maybe we might have thought it, it was strange, but I feel like it's almost normal, especially in the Mass Effect universe. Hey, Dr. Chuck was, hold on, let me, talk, let me look Access at everything else. to the AI core is restricted. Let me in there, Edie. What are you doing here? Commander Shepard. I watched the Normandy crumble with you on board. It's good to see you alive. Good to see you. Why are you here? Good to see you. Why are you here? This almost seems like a renegade option. Why are you here? But I want to say it because I'm so curious and it's good to see her too. I'm shocked. You're serving on a Cerberus vessel now? Surprising. Even to me. Yet, here I am. The kind of trauma you endured would have changed most people. But not you, I see. Welcome back, Shepard. Are we gonna ask her if she needs anything? 
Leaving the Alliance? What are you doing here? Doctor, you've been with the Alliance for years. Why leave now? After the Normandy was lost, the surviving crew was reassigned. I was stationed at the Mars Naval Medical Center. A very respectable position, but it wasn't on a starship. You need the fly? I'm so dumbfounded that you're actually here because you were in the Alliance. Well, I'm still dumbfounded. Well, not really about Joker. It's, I feel like Joker just wants to fly. And if the elusive man was giving him that, yes. And she just wants to be a part of something. You need the fly too? Colonial military life isn't for you. I've spent most of my life on warships, never knowing what the next mission might bring. I'm used to the hum of engines, the creaking of bulkheads, that subtle vertigo when the momentum dampeners kick in. Life planet side is just too static, too boring. Joining Cerberus, yes. You're not the Cerberus type, Doctor. I don't work for Cerberus. I work for you. On a mission that may be crucial to the survival of the human race. I have faith that your dealings with Cerberus will be ethical. I trust you, Commander. She only left the Alliance to come help us? That is so heartwarming, Chakwas. We barely had any dialogue too much in the first game, but we must have meant a lot to her. Wow, that is so cool, man. I am so happy they brought this little addition back. Now it makes me wonder if we go down in the other areas, as in like down by the drive corner shit. I wonder if Adams is down there too. They might be bringing all the tiny members back that was on the crew. Wow, Chakwas, the loyalty. Loyalty is such a huge thing to me. And Chakwas, Joker, they are so loyal right now. Seriously, if you're leaving the Alliance and you're joining a rogue group like Cerberus, basically, just for Shepard, that's really loyal. There's a very good chance this mission will be a one-way trip. Are you prepared for that? I've been through the reclaiming of Shanxi, the Skillian Blitz. We survived the Battle of the Citadel and the destruction of the Normandy together. I've lived a full life. No regrets. I'd like to make sure the crew gets the same opportunity. So you're pretty content with your life. Now you're here to help Shepard with him and his life. I get it. I do. I really do, Shakwas. Do you have everything you need? I believe so. This medical bay seems very much like the sick bay on the original Normandy. Only thing missing are my private reserves. I even had a bottle of Ceres ice brandy that I was saving for a special occasion. You want to get Krog? I'll keep an eye out for a replacement bottle. Oh, you needn't. It's expensive, and we have much larger concerns ahead. What is she? What did she say? She had some kind of brandy? I'll see you later, Doctor. Commander. Take it easy, Chakwas. I'm so happy you're here. Find brandy. Find a bottle of Ceres ice brandy at a store somewhere. There we go. I'm so happy she's here. I love seeing people from the first game. It's just nostalgia kicking in. And she's she just wants to be here for Shepard. Chakwas, you're so cool. Was there anything else in here? No? No, Edie? Cruise quarters. Let's find another area of the ship here. Well, we're pretty much covering all of the whole ship. Is anyone down here? There's no members down here, but I still want to go down and run around, I guess. I want to see what this is. See what everything fully is. Look, I mean, look how big the Normandy is. Scholar, what was that codex? UT-47 Kodiak Drop Shuttle. Drop Shuttle. Do they not have the Mako anymore? What's this area of the ship? Normandy's cargo deck. It includes facilities to rearm and repair Normandy's embarked ground vehicle and shuttle. My last ship didn't need a shuttle. Why do we have one? This ship is nearly twice the mass of the previous Normandy. It is more difficult to land the ship on high gravity worlds. To be honest with you, if you want my, want my opinion, I feel like a shuttle is probably more effective than a Mako. It would be nice to have a Mako, but I feel like the small little shuttle taking you off the planets is, well, first of all, it's more safe, I can imagine. Access to this room is currently restricted. But I also feel like it's a bit more invaluable than just the Mako itself. Because, well, it flies, for one. Oh, here, here's more people. You came all the way down here to see us? 
You're speaking to our commanding officer. Shape up. Shape up. Shape up. I didn't hear an officer on deck. I run this ship military. Do you two think this is all a joke? Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. Won't happen again, sir. At ease. Who are you? <laughs> I'm Engineer Ken Donnelly, handling the power control systems. This is Gabby. That's Engineer Gabriella Daniels, actually. I'm responsible for the propulsion systems. What can we do for you, Commander? I just got flashbacks from the first game. Remember? Some of the first options that we said. One of the first dialogue we said when we came in the game was, <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> Your soldiers act like it. That was literally like the same damn thing. What the hell? I'm sorry I didn't really mean to go at you like that because that's not how I am, but I just had to see what it was. Where did you receive your training? Both Gabby and I started in the Alliance, serving on the SSV Perugia. She flew in the first wave at the Battle of the Citadel. We saw Sovereign firsthand. Shape up. So you were at the Battle of the Citadel, but you left the Alliance? You were in the Alliance too? Why did you leave the Perugia? After you died, Anderson lost political clout. The Council backslid on the Reaper menace. They discounted Sovereign as an isolated threat, as a single... Which was bullshit. They said your warnings of a greater danger were mistaken or delusional. We lost respect for Alliance leadership. We need to fight the real enemy, and only Cerberus seemed to be doing that. Are you serious? Is the Alliance really putting this out that Shepard was fucking crazy? Friends. Are we making an enemy of the Alliance fully? Are we fully turning to the Cerberus now? They are literally the only ones that is doing anything and, and you got people mutiny from the Alliance to join Cerberus because of this shit. Wow. I just can't believe all that... Can't Anderson inspire people? Anderson has to know for sure. I don't feel like Anderson would discount the reapers there's no way i don't feel like hackett would either he was there everyone was there had to still believe how did you wind up with cerberus ken once you were gone the alliance brass descended like vultures tearing apart everything you'd said i was very public with my defense for you i didn't hold back that's an understatement if kenneth wasn't such a talented engineer they'd have court-martialed him for insubordination but it got me noticed by the elusive man he made an offer and here i am that's so awesome. Now I feel bad for telling you guys to shave up because you're all really good people. Everyone on the Normandy is good. So why did you join, Gabby? Kenneth and I have been partners in crime since we graduated from Tech Academy. When he got the Cerberus offer, I insisted that it include me. He'd fall apart without me. Thanks, Mum. Also, I love engines, and the Normandy is state of the art. When I got the opportunity to work on her, I had to jump. So are engineers here. Partners in crime, Ken and Gabby. What do you think about Cerberus? Actually, we don't know much about the organization other than the Normandy team. We know our mission and who's in charge. We're off to kick the Collectors right in their daddy bags. That's enough for me. <laughs> they go right in the daddy bags. Alright, Ken. Are you set up okay down here? We can't complain. I just wish it didn't take so long to calibrate the FBA arrays. The Kenneth, you're complaining. But it could be for a good reason. What kind of problems are you having? When they upgraded the Normandy design, they got a bit sloppy with the FBA couplings. I won't bore you with the tech, but there is an array of attenuators in the primary power transfer system that channels the field bleed. Kenneth, you're boring the commander with tech. In short, if we had T6 FBA couplings installed, it'd save us a lot of maintenance time each day. You guys are so cool. Why isn't something like that already installed? It's probably just a design oversight. Efficiency isn't affected, it's a maintenance issue. Also, the T6 model can be hard to find. Nash and Stellar Dynamics discontinued them. We could probably find used ones in the Omega markets, but we have no time for shore leave. Omega? Oh, we're going to Omega next anyway! Alright, take it easy. Carry on. Will do, Commander. Your soldiers, act like it! FBA couplings, go to Omega and find a T6 FBA. We got Renegade. That was terrible. I really I'm amazed just... Shepard came down to see us. I told you he would. There seems to be a lot of banter going around. I wonder the more we... Possibly... Because in the first game, the banter seemed to... Well, there wasn't no banter like that. But the dialogue itself ended up recycling after main mission. So maybe we 
come back on the Normandy just like the first game and talk to people after main missions. What's this area of the ship? This is main engineering, which contains the ship's main fusion plant and Mass Effect core. Mass Effect core, this looks sick. They really, this new Normandy is awesome. I'm loving it. We have stairs down. Oh, what's down here? It's uh I don't even know. What is this spot? Monitoring station, elevator, engineering. It's just be it's just below engineering. It's a little hidey hole. Type of thing. All right, well, let's head back up. I feel like we talked to everybody on the Normandy. Well, there we go. We know everyone on the Normandy. We know what's going on. You guys got anything else or no? Whoa. Let's head to... I want to look at this. Let's look at the galaxy map. I want to see what it looks like in this game. But I feel like... No messages for you, Commander. Thank you, Kelly. I mean, I read them all last time. I want to see what it looks like. See what we got. Holy. Oh, we're in. We are in. There's Omega right here. Oh, shit. This is. Hold on here. O Omega 4 Relay. Isn't that the one thing? Look at this mother effort. It's red. It's not blue at all. The Omega 4 Relay is surrounded by hazard beacons and automated warnings. Over the last thousand years, many ships have attempted to pass through it, but none have returned. The only ones to pass freely back and forth through the Relay are the mysterious collectors. There are many theories why ships never return from the Omega 4. Some say there is a black hole at the far end. Others, mostly the impoverished underclass of Omega believe there is some form of earthly paradise. Most, however, simply think the collectors capture or destroy those passing through the relay. Oh, shit. Wait. So, can we enter? Until we have a solution in place, we cannot utilize the Omega-4 relay. Let me in there, Edie. Come on. Wait, explore Normandy crash site. The, the Normandy crashed in this, this area? How do I... Well, that's definitely not it. How do I... Is there a way to back out? As in... Let me look at the mass relay. Plot, mass relay, jump. Oh, you have to go over to the mass. Look at this shit. Holy... Friends, we didn't have many missions up here, so... Phoenix Project Overlord. We, all the missions in the first game, we were like here and over this general area. There's a citadel, obviously. Recruit the Warlord Firewalker. Let's see. So this has to be the Terminus systems fully then. Omega Nebula, 10%. It actually shows you how much percent. Let's go around. There's a fuel depot here. Buy fuel. Do we not have any fuel? Buy fuel? Well, we have a bunch of fuel. Interesting. We got Omega here. Should we go to these other planets? Yeah, let's look at these other planets. And I wonder if there's any asteroids like the first game. Unexplored, enter orbit. Binduar? If it were closer to Sahabaric, Bindor would have an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and ethane in the deep cold of the outer solar systems, however. Both elements have long since frozen to the ground. Is there any... Population here? Start scanner? What the hell is this? Whoa. Start scanner? Launch probe. Probe away. In research projects, platinum is used to upgrade sniper rifles, shotguns, and medical equipment. How do you... Can we keep doing this? Oh, now I see... Look, okay, we have nine probes now. 
So basically, we're just scanning these planets. Oh, friends, I think this is something that might be best done farming-wise, off-camera type of thing. Let me just say. Okay. Wow. Look at that. Probe away. You can now afford collector Chitin armor research project. I think with this planet scanning stuff, because it seems very... I want to say it might be time consuming. But it's, it's good that we got this initial stuff on because it seems, it seems a good way. For instance, there's no more, there's probably no more finding, well, there probably is finding resource stuff because we found Iridian in the first place. But I feel like this is a way for us to build up all of our stuff there. All this probe stuff. Interesting. I like this, but I feel like that's something I'm going to do off camera quite a lot. How do we just exit out? Is it this? Oh, I get it. Let's read the rest of these planets. And off camera, after this episode, I'll go and do all the stuff. The scanning. Ardak? But I wonder if it will find something. Maybe it will lead to something. Look, if it leads to any kind of quest and we find something on these planets from the scanning, I'll obviously stop and then we'll showcase it next episode. Erdak is a close orbiting brown dwarf. Most red brown dwarf binary systems have an average separation of 8 AU. The Sobrik system is about 12 billion years old. It has long since used up the deuterium used to fuel fusion. So Erdak is not luminous like some brown dwarves are. Erdak is a class L brown dwarf with a relatively low temperature of 1,300 degrees Celsius, but its heat and gravity have made it unpopular for development. There are rumors that the heads of several of Omega's crime syndicates maintain private residences on various moons. Whatever the truth of the matter, battles between syndicate vessels are often observed around the ring plane. News outlets on Omega maintain satellites at Erdax Lagrange, points for real-time coverage of these battles, which garner high viewer ratings. Fucking... what? Start scanning? What is this planet at? Moderate? So, this is really fucking interesting. I kind of like this. It seems like it would be something really relaxing to do. But... I'll do it on my own time. Obviously, we're gonna read the planets how do I... I'm moving in. Oh, there we go. We're at 80% right now, then. Oh, I like this. So if we click on this planet, it will be 100%. It means we explored everything. Amorkin? A standard methane, ammonia, gas giant. Amorkin is the main source of helium-3 fuel for ships coming from... to or from Omega. Most of its fueling stations are run by criminal cartels who engage in cutthroat, sometimes literally, pricing wars. Amorkin is also widely known for its layover stations where pirates in a hurry can find fuel, ammunition, intoxicants, gambling, and sexual companionship at any hour. And then... Moderate stuff here too. Cool. But what if these planets yield something? when you scan this. Look, Sahabaric is at 100% now. We have this Omega place. I feel like we, we should probably just do it next episode because we have codexes to do still. And I want to do all these planets before we touch down. So I wonder, I could imagine though, seriously, if you think about it, we're probably gonna, we're probably gonna spend a shit ton of money on these probes because it seems like there's a, a bunch of probe in each planet. Each one of these planets. Can we probe Omega? We can't probe Omega. Okay. Before we head into Omega, I feel like I want to have a full episode of this Omega place. 
Now that we got our barons with everything, let's look at the codex stuff. We have ships, vehicles. There was stuff in aliens, non-council races that in the early twenty one. We did batarians before. The alliance began a collectors. We didn't do. Of world. Living beyond the Omega-4 oh mass my. relay in the Terminus systems, the mysterious collector species is glimpsed so rarely as to be taken for a myth by most in galactic society. In reality, collectors are human-sized insectoid bipeds and can resemble massive winged beetles. They are a terrifying force in the galaxy, responsible for the murder of hundreds of thousands. Collectors generate permanent stasis fields around themselves, creating nightmarish red-shifted energy fields. In battle, they hold position whenever possible, relying on their aggressive biotics and nearly limitless power. Several types of bipedal collectors have been identified, including minions, defenders, zealots, assassins, and artillery operators. Acting together, collectors have imprisoned entire cities in stasis. While no definite forensic accounting exists to explain the fate of those imprisoned, Leading speculation is that victims are harvested for scientific experimentation and neurobiological repurposing. Whoa, collectors, you are something else. So basically they have stasis fields around them, but look at their stuff they got here. It almost looks like a really hard material. And they said they almost, they're like beetles, kinda. They look like the insectoid race. Runs. The up, they're gonna be a the problem. Geth, the Hanar, Krogans, Reaper, Sirius. A myth common to several cultures in the galaxy. Reapers were imagined to be space monsters who consumed entire stars. Archaeologists and mythologists attempting to uncover sources for such myths have yielded little, except interstellar religious themes of all-consuming devils common to primitive cultures. Well, there we go. We definitely didn't have Reapers in the first game. The Volus are a member... All right, so anything new at this point would be stuff that we could actually do. Cerberus Project Overlord. Humanity and Systems Alliance. A political economic pact for collective colonial security. The Alliance is the central galactic institution of human society. The Alliance gained associate membership to the Citadel Council in 2165 and full membership in 2183 with Ambassador David Anderson representing humanity. Human political economic relationships vary between combative and lucrative. The Turians, who'd fought humans during the 2157 First Contact War, have become valuable trade partners, despite residual social hostility. Other relationships are even more complicated. The rapid rise of human political influence on the Council, achieving in decades what others waited or are still waiting centuries to acquire, has galvanized suspicion and resentment against humanity. That negativity is vastly outweighed by the respect and trust humanity earned by saving the Council during the 2183 attack on the Citadel. At the cost of Alliance cruisers, Cairo, Cape Town, Emden, Jakarta, Madrid, Seoul, Shenyang, and Warsaw, and their 2400 crew. Damn, that hit me right in the feel. So... We lost all these cruisers. We lost 2,400 humans in the war, so that has to be due to our decisions of saving the council then. When we read about the Destiny Ascension in the first game, the Destiny Ascension had 40,000 people on it. So we sacrificed 2,400 people for 40,000 and the council. I know, remember when I said it in the first game? Mass Effect's gonna become a, a game of numbers. From the outside looking in, that probably was the right call. Because in the long run, we saved more. But it still really stings to know all the names of the ships that I specifically got killed. Kiaro, Cape Town, Emden, Jakarta, Mandrid, Seoul, Shenyang, and Warsaw. That's crazy. But these are only cruisers, though. Would it? Maybe this is not what we did then. Maybe this is just saying this is who we lost in general. Because obviously, without the decision, Sovereign was still fighting everyone. But I feel like 
if you were going to fight Sovereign, you're not going to fight him with cruisers. You're going to fight him with, like, Dreadnoughts. I can imagine that we lost Dreadnoughts. The Dreadnoughts is what we lost, probably. As in, the decision that I made to save the council. It had to be Dreadnoughts, not cruisers. It doesn't make sense to be a cruiser. So that might be something else. Ships and vehicles for 300, please. The Systems Alliance Sp The Systems Alliance UT-47 drop shuttle landing craft holds 12 soldiers in a cramped, uncomfortable cargo bay and two more in the cockpit. Officially named the Kodiak, the drop shuttle is better known to Alliance Marines as the Combat Cockroach due to its appearance and durability. The vehicle's robust environmental sealant technology exposes few vulnerable parts to the elements. First tested in the sulfuric acid clouds and extreme temperatures of Venus, the Kodiak can land in hard vacuum, high pressure, and temperatures from near absolute zero to over 900 degrees Celsius. A true contragravitic vehicle, the Kodiak's substantial element zero core allows flight by entirely countering the vehicle's mass. Its small thrusters are for directional control only. So if the mass effect field fails, the vehicle becomes a proverbial three million credit coffin. The unarmed shuttle forgoes weaponry space for active masking, electronic countermeasures, and a robust kinetic barrier system, ideal for dropping troops undetected. Really awesome, this Kodiak. So it's a Kodiak, it's not, it's not just called shuttle. They call it a Kodiak. Let's read one more. Let's read, read something, because the secondary choose to read. Cerberus Project Overlord? Planet Atai? Two beautiful moons, one spectacular ring, zero neighbors. Says a popular advertisement for the Terminus Systems world. Ite is known for its sparsely settled population despite being a garden planet with a colony nearly a century old. Blessed with a mild climate, wildlife no more dangerous than that on Earth, and soil and bacteria amenable to imported plants, Height would appear to be an unexploited paradise. However, it is unpopular for two reasons. The first and most obvious is that its moon, Lette, is in an unstable orbit that will lead to a planetary impact and an execution level event within the next two centuries. As such, all investment in the planet is short term and the biggest business is selling off the local biota to the highest bidder. Like the second drawback is the level of violence on the planet. Like the rest of the Phoenix massing cluster, Ite was briefly considered part of the Citadel space during the first wave of colonization. However, when the colony broke off to become an independent planet in 2133, the Council let the doomed planet go with less than a day of debate. Free from any real governing body, Ite's history has since been filled with wars between small frontier town city-states over its resources. The result is a dangerous world where the average citizen is expected to be self-reliant to the point of fending for themselves against cutthroat corporations, strong-arm militia groups, and even geth incursions. The fighting is so frequent that the name of the planet itself has changed more than 11 times. In a sign of blunt indifference, standard Citadel Galaxy Mass referred to the world by the name given to it by human colonists in the latter half of the century. So Cerberus Project Overlord, this is a quest. We're learning about a quest in secondary? Friends, I have a feeling that might be a DLC. Because in the first game we got a codex entry, none, none of the other regular quests were a codex en entry. The... That one was a codex entry. The only quest that I can remember reading about was, well obviously the planets, okay. The main story of planets were something that came up. But, Bringing Down the Sky DLC had a codex entry on it as well. Project Overlord. There's a couple quests that we got. We got the Normandy, picking up the Normandy stuff again. The old Normandy. We got this Project Overlord, and we got this Firewalker as well. Maybe their DLC is. I'm not really sure. Anyways, I believe that's enough for now. Next episode, we will be definitely heading to this Omega system and picking up the Doctor. Let's look at the journal. Hold on. 
Look at the journal here. Let's make a path. So we got FBA Coupling, Ceres Ice Brandy. This is all assignments. And then, oh, this is all side shit. Overlord, Project Firewalker. Normandy Crash Site. See, like, is this DLC stuff? I don't know. Maybe this could even be a DLC stuff. Probably not. Maybe they're just quests. The Elusive Man just gave us quests. Maybe they're not DLCs. I don't know the names of the DLC, and I don't want to know, obviously. Because it could be spoilers and stuff. We just take it as we go. We'll, we get the stuff as we go. But when they come up in the playthrough, like this specifically... Could it be a DLC? If it is. I don't want to know about any other ones that we haven't seen yet. These two specific... Actually, these three. This doesn't seem like it's huge, though. But this seems... This is just a side thing. And this is just a side thing, too. There's no way they're DLCs, because they do seem side stuff. Maybe this is the Elusive Man just giving us some stuff to explore other planets. Probably. But anyways, if something comes up and, like, for instance, maybe Overlord of this one is a DLC, and I see it right here right now, then we can confirm it being a DLC. But if we don't know about it yet, let's not bring up any names on anything. Anyway, so next episode we were doing Find the Professor, Horton Solis. We'll read about that at the beginning of next episode, and then we will take it from there. But anyways, my friends, I'm out of here. Have a good one. Stay safe. See you next time. Take care.